you know very well that their heart is burning and they want new life. I haven't done this any night, only tonight. And I want you, with every eye closed in this building, I want two things to happen. I want every one of you that brought someone and someone you love that needs this miracle, just gently lean over to them and quietly say, would you go up there? Would you walk up there and receive Christ and have new life if I went with you? If I went with you, now, with nobody looking, two things. Number one, if you ask them and they said yes, stand up with them right now. Stand up with them right now. Number two, if nobody asked you to stand up and you know you belong here, then let Jesus be the one who told you to stand up. And stand up right now. Get up out of your seat and come to the front, wherever you are. Get up and walk down here right now. Say, preacher, you just don't give up. I never give up. Get up. Get up and come to Jesus. Get up and follow him. I may be glad we did this. Look at. Now I'm going to direct my attention to those of you that are here. Amen. Amen. I want to direct my words to all of you that are here in the front for just a moment. If we didn't do anything else tonight but talk to you, we would be doing the best thing we could do. And I need you to look me in the eye, and I want you to understand what's going to happen. A power of darkness is trying to control your soul. That power will be broken the moment that you give Christ the authority over you. And you say, you are my Lord now. Put your hand over your heart. Of all the nights that I have witnessed, this is the altar call where I feel the raw conversion of lost souls right here. I'm feeling it right now. So I want you to say this. Say, Jesus, I see you on the cross. Dying a horrible death. When you died, you proved you loved me. And you will always love me. Three days later, you rose from the dead. Proving that you have the power to change my life. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life. Wash away all my sin by the power of the blood that you shed for me on the cross. I believe I'm being saved. I'm being born again. And when I die, I will go to heaven with you. And I thank you, Jesus, that you have done this miracle for me. Now, I want all of you to look at me, and I want you to understand what you've just done. Satan has lost his rights to you. And you're now... And when you read John 17, because we're going to give you a Bible tonight, we're going to give you a Bible... You're going to read in the 17th chapter of John something that's going to amaze you. Is Christ just began praying for you. It's here's what the Bible says. I pray not for the world, but I pray for those that you have given to me. And when you said yes to Christ, 
Jesus in heaven began praying for you. And that's an astonishing thought. Now, I need you to help me recreate the miracle of the Red Sea. <laughs> and by the way, we're going to protect your seat because this meeting is not over yet. I want those of you that are here to look at that aisle right there. Turn and look at it. And I want those of you on this side to turn and look at that aisle. And we need those of you in the front to march the quickest. The best people you've ever met in your life are waiting to pray with you for five minutes. Then you're going to come back in the tent to where you were seated before. And I want you to know that here's what's going to happen. God is going to heal the sick. God is going to do miracles. But even if a dead body came back to life, it would not be near the miracle that you have received tonight. So start marching right now. Start marching. Everybody hold your applause a second. Let's get them going. Now, jump up on your feet and welcome your new brothers and sisters into the family of God. Welcome them. Somebody get excited right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look how long it's taken to get the harvest brought in. Isn't it wonderful? Now, I would like you to be seated so that I can silently get a little bit of silence to warn our workers that are out there and it's going to be very easy to get excited and pray for them for hours and hours. we got five minutes, and then I want you to bring them back in the tent. You say, well, Mara, why do you wait? Why do you have this filler time waiting for them? Because some of the ones that get healed first are the new converts. They're the ones that get healed by the power of God, and I don't want them to miss it. Is that okay with you? Well, I was up most of the night, uh, well, it felt like it, with Lance Walno <laughs> and with Jean. And I sat between them to keep everything. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I felt when I was talking to them is Jean texted me this morning because he was a little bit quiet. And I was concerned. Why is he so quiet? Lance definitely had conversation. <laughs> and it was all wonderful. It was powerful, what the things he said. I wish I could have recorded them. But Gene texted me this morning, and he said, I want you to understand why I was so quiet. He said, I was overcome by the miracles that I saw with my own eyes in the tent. And he said, my wife and I talked about it, that we had really never, ever seen anything like that before. And this morning when I woke up and I thought about him saying that, the Holy Spirit said, and you, Mario Murillo, have not seen anything yet. <laughs> I maybe heard what I just said. How many of you will give me permission to tell you some things that are very, very important? Yeah. All right, our next tent crusade, and I would like the Doyles to stand up for a moment right down here. 
This is the pastors of Cornerstone Church in Batavia, New York. Right there. Powerful. Powerful couple. This tent is going to New York next. Now, they will tell you themselves that this large piece of land that they own, and you may be seated, this large piece of land that they own, their church, nearly went on sale. But at the last minute, God just spoke to him and said, your church is going to explode. And the way we met was he was watching Flashpoint one night. And I said, we need a bigger tent. I have a feeling I'm going to be saying that most of my life. And I said, we need a bigger tent. And they had a tent that was 12,000 square feet. Ours was 8,000 square feet. So by the numbers, we've gone to our third tent, 8,000 square feet, 12,000 square feet. And now tonight, you're sitting in one that is 19,000 square feet. And... Uh, so we're moving this, this cathedral of miracles and conversions across the United States to western New York. And we're going to make an appeal for all of you that are in the Army, the volunteers, to start making plans to join my wife and I and all of us and Frank and ICA. We're, we're going to western New York. The last time we were there, we had 4,000 people try to get into a 12,000 square foot. It didn't work. And it was raining, and half of them were out in the rain. Well, we're bringing this tent now, whether it's big enough or not, I'm still bringing it because I just bought it. So I want all of you to prepare. I want you to say this with me. May. 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. The devil gets his lips torn off in New York. You didn't say it. No, no. The devil gets his lips torn off in New York. Now shout. We're, we're going to believe God for an excess of 12 hundred volunteers and we're going to reach the city of Buffalo and the city of Rochester and Batavia. We're going to go to both major New York cities and we are going to see a massive explosion in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to know that on in the month of April on the 21st and 22nd the Lord told me to rent the Maybe Center at Oral Roberts University. You know, we're talking 8,000 seats. Like, what is wrong with you, Mario? What is going through your mind when you do these things? You don't want to know what we're paying for those two nights. But on the first night, Hank Kuhneman, Lance Walnow, Gene Bailey, and myself are going to do Flashpoint live from the Maybe Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We want all of you to come. I need all of you to come. I got thousands of seats to fill. And I'm a little bit intimidated doing a healing service at Oral Roberts University. That's like challenging Betty Crocker to a bake-off. But the Lord told me, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. So I'm going to tell you, the power of God is going to fall on the baby center on Friday night, April the 22nd. But we're not done yet. July the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, this 10th is going to Colorado Springs. Somebody shout right now. Yeah, it is. This next thing I'm going to say, I, I, I need to pray before I say anything more. 
my wife, who I love dearly, I'm madly in love with her. When I met her and she walked past me, the Lord said, uh, are you in love at first sight or should I make her walk past you again? I didn't need a do-over. But I want to tell you that she tells me every once in a while, you need to be careful when you make an announcement because people take everything you say seriously. And okay, all right. This is a vision. This is a vision. Where is our next tent crusade in California? Bakersfield. <laughs> Come on, Max. Close. You were only about 400 miles off. Where are we going next? All right. We are fighting to do a tent crusade in a new tent. We're looking now to buy a tent that seats 5,000 people. Somebody shout to the Lord right now. Just shout. Give him the glory. Where do I want to put it? At Cal Expo in Sacramento. Why? Because while we're there, we're going to go to the Capitol steps and do a mass rally that is going to bring Christians from all over the state of California to tell Gavin Newsom, Jesus is Lord of California. How many of you will come with me? How many of you are ready to come with me? Glory to God. Normally, when I do a crusade, the cash register in my head goes cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. So we looked at Cal Expo, and it was like cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. <laughs> it is exponentially. The budget will be five to ten times the size of the one we had for this meeting. But we are going to do it because the Bible says if you bind the strong man, that you can take his treasure. And California has been under the influence of the devil and demonic thinking for so long. If we need to go to Cal, how many of you believe we need to go there? So now, do we have it? No. Is it going to be easy to get? No. <laughs> But will we get it? Yeah. No matter what, we're going after it. We're going after it. Our goal is to be there in late October, early November. So I want you to be ready and get ready now for the, the great Sacramento Cal Expo Tent Crusade in a tent that's going to be possibly twice the size of this one. What did I just say? That's 38,000 square feet of tent. But how many of you know, if we're going to do this for God, if we're going to fulfill the destiny of 99 being a corridor of God's glory, then we have got to start reaching an audience that is really, really strong, powerful, influential, and will make a difference. And I believe the time is short, and we've got to do it. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The Bible tells us that there are two groups of people in the body of Christ. It's found in the 11th proverb. It says there is one who gives and yet has more. And one who withholds and yet comes to nothing. And I never studied that until one day I realized that people are told by God to give a certain amount. Let's, let's look at this. People are told, I want you to give a certain amount. And they don't because they look at their rent, they look at their car payment, they look at it. And this is what the Bible is saying. They held money back thinking that it would solve their financial problems, and it didn't. 
The other gave beyond what they could afford, assuming they'd have a financial problem, and they didn't. So the, the issue of I'm withholding because I'm afraid I can't afford it is invalid. It's valid when it's given to a person. It's valid when it's invested in gambling. It's valid, but when it's given to God for the sake of the lost, it will be a safe You'll never, ever be in trouble. No one ever lost money underwriting an act of God. Now, I don't need to tell you this is an act of God. I don't need to tell you. There's some of you in here that have been prospered remarkably through the pandemic. God paid your bills, took care of your church, did miracles for you. Now, I want you to know this. It is dangerous when God does that kind of miracle where he showed such provision for you and then you withhold when he asks you to give. My wife is the most generous person I've ever met in my life. I'll lean over her when she's writing checks to ministries and I'm whispering inside going, there better be God. God better be real because she is moved by the Spirit. And we have never lacked because of her obedience to the Lord. Now, how many of you are excited to give to the Lord? All right. We're raising war bonds for the sake of this state right here. Because you're going to watch MMM. We'll go to New York. We'll go to Colorado Springs. But we are always coming back to the 99. And God told me that there are going to be revival churches all the way up and down the 99. In all the cities, there are going to be churches that are going to defy the evil laws and stand for God. And they're going to get the young people. They're going to get the miracles. They're going to get the finances. They're going to pay cash for buildings. And they're going to have the presence of God and powerful. Those string of churches are going to stretch all the way from Bakersfield to Sacramento and beyond, all the way to Red Bluff. Redding already has enough. (laughs) Those are the, the students from Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry right over there. And they've been on the streets. They've been on the streets. And, and you know what? You've been learning from the very best because inner city action, Frank's team, nobody I've ever seen has a greater anointing among addicts and the homeless than they do. Give inner city action the loudest <laughs> applause. Loudest. Love you guys. The best. <laughs> And I, if they tell me they're not going to work with me, I'm just going to shut this whole thing down. And then they're going to have to deal with God. What did you tell Mario that made him quit? We said we weren't going to help him anymore. I did, oh, no, God, you don't want to do that. And I know that Frank Saldana and I are going to be teamed up for life. I know that. Yeah, we are. And it's just going to keep exploding. I already feel the healing virtue of the Holy Spirit starting to rise. And people are starting to feel the power of God in their body. I had an entirely different sermon prepared for tonight. In fact, these are the the notes which are going to make a nice souvenir for some future event. And we're about to move into the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you have to have faith. And I want you to look at me right here. In the second row, you have a fur collar on, dear. Nearly 45 minutes ago, the Lord told me what he was going to do for you tonight. So I want you to stand. 
And I'm going to ask the lady beside you if she would stand as well. I want everyone to look at me right now and understand this. The degree to which you enjoy a moment when the Holy Spirit is flowing is directly tied to how reverent and grateful you are that God is moving at all. One of the people, and I, I'm not going to have you stand very long, I'm just going to make this statement. One of the people that has been in this meeting is someone that you would all know. And you know what he said to me? He said, I have been waiting all of my life to see what God is doing in this tent. And how many of you believe that what you have watched every night has been nothing short of wonderful? Has it been wonderful? How many of you are grateful for what you've seen God do? My dear, we've not met. This is kind of new to you. Totally new to you. And you don't even know what I'm about to do, and you're scared a little bit, but you're being healed. And you have fought this illness for so many years. More than 20 years of your life, you've had this pain and these symptoms. And you're going to be healed, and when you go to your doctor, they're going to do a thorough examination looking for something, and it will not be there because God removed it from your body. For you to have faith, for this fire that's going to burn this thing out of your body, I must tell you a short story. You've had this before, and it looked like it went away. Then it came back. Then it looked like it went away again, and it came back. This is the third time that you've had to battle this. And it's over. Because what's happening is the fire of God is going into your body. Now, I'm going to ask you, my dear, to help me. And you know what? The reason you're getting so excited is because the power of God is on your body too. You're being healed as well. Now, what you do, my dear, on this side, put your hand on her back. This lady put her hand on this. See what's happening? fire of God is going in your spine. Now you take your hand, dear. Yeah, no, we're going to stay with this. There we go. Now I'm going to ask you, in the green, put your hand on your own stomach. What you're going to find is that something that appeared on an x-ray 